Hi there guys, I hope you are having a good day. Now, it has finally been revealed what actually happened in that sparring session between Tyson Fury and Dillian White. Dillian White said that he had dropped Tyson Fury. He definitely put him down on his ass at one point in that sparring session. Now, Peter Fury, who was with Tyson Fury during that point, because obviously Huey Fury was in camp with Tyson Fury at the point when Dillian White fought Tyson Fury in a sparring session. Now, Peter Fury explained that Dillian White was trying to take it to him. He was trying to make a fight out of it. And Tyson Fury did not have headgear on, but Dillian White did. And he said that Tyson Fury had to really step it up in there with Dillian White. He knew that Dillian White was a different caliber of opposition from the other sparring partners there, aside from his son, Huey Fury, obviously. But ultimately, it was the fact that Dillian White brought it to Tyson Fury. He never said that Tyson Fury was dropped by Dillian White, but he did say that it was very competitive and Tyson Fury did not necessarily have it all his own way in there. It was a competitive spa. But that being said, he did kind of avoid the question whether Tyson Fury was dropped by Dillian White. This is what he had to say in response to that question. Tyson is a very, very highly skilled boxer and a lot of these heavyweights, especially back then, struggled to lay a glove on him. Slip and slide, very cute with his ability. He's not easy to land on, but they all had their moments. You can't go through endless rounds of sparring without getting hit. They were competitive spars for sure. When I was with Tyson, I wasn't interested in him having a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight. I was interested in him boxing, using his range and leverage. The spars didn't mean anything. I would always have two or three sparring partners doing a round in, jump out, round out, jump back in. White and Tyson had good spars, but you cannot take anything from a spa. So he was asked if Tyson Fury was ever floored by Dillian White, and he did not give a definitive answer. He did not say yes or no. He just said that they were competitive spars and that Dillian White did have his moments, just like everyone else in the camp with Tyson Fury. Now, that system of having one round, then that fighter jumps out and another fighter gets in means that Tyson Fury is tired. The fighter getting back in is fresh. That's the whole point of these spars, to make sure that Tyson Fury is sharp going late into the fight. That is why, obviously, you have different sparring partners, to make sure that the fighter who is getting to sparring, Tyson Fury, is fresh going through the fight, meaning that his stamina will not be an issue, and he can stay switched on when he gets tired, because that's the first thing that starts happening. As soon as you start getting tired, you do not see punches coming that you normally would because the reaction times are diminished. But what Tyson Fury was doing was having one spar, that fighter getting out, then say Dillian White getting in. So Tyson Fury was already sort of tired when Dillian White would get in. Still, Tyson Fury was 24 years old, which is very, very young, but still, in Tyson Fury's career, he was 17 and 0 at the point. This was seven years ago, 2013. So Tyson Fury was just building up. He was about to go to the next level. Dillian White was still a novice. Dillian White hadn't had that many fights at all. He was 9-0 at that point and his best win had came over Mike Holden for Dillian White. So Dillian White was at a different point in his career to Tyson Fury but they are at a similar point now because Tyson Fury is WBC world champion. Dillian White is mandatory and WBC interim world champion and will fight Tyson Fury next year if all things go well for the WBC world title, provided Tyson Fury wants to take that fight. Obviously, the mandatory will be called. Whether Tyson Fury hangs on to that belt or vacates and wants to go and fight Anthony Joshua, we don't know what could happen down the line. But this fight is significant. This fight could happen next year. That is why back then, it meant nothing. It was Tyson Fury getting ready for a fight. It was Tyson Fury bringing in sparring partners to get prepared. Dillian White was one of those sparring partners. Back then, it didn't mean anything. It meant that it was a novice in Dillian White against a Tyson Fury who was hoping to get to the next level after coming off a good win over Derek Chisora. So times were different then, but now it is significant because obviously, does Dillian White have the style to beat Tyson Fury? That is the question. And many don't believe he does because obviously he's a smaller opponent and many liken him to Derek Chisora. Tyson Fury would just outbox him and control him. But not necessarily, because Dillian White has a very different style 
to Derek Chisora. Now that's not to say that Derek Chisora is not a good fighter. He is, and he tucks up well, comes forward well, bobs and weaves. He hardly gets hit on his way in, which is surprising because he does rush forward. He does get hit sometimes too much, but maybe that's down to him not preparing properly for that fight. Derek Chisora at his best is a tough night for anyone, any of the champions. So Derek Chisora is a good fighter, but styles make fights. And Derek Chisora's style was just one that wasn't going to be able to beat Tyson Fury. But Dillian White has a different style. Dillian White can box as well. Box off the back foot, box going forwards. We saw that in the Oscar Rivas fight. He boxed incredibly well during that fight. His jab was brilliant. Dillian White does have a good jab. He didn't use it as much as he does now before. He has really developed that ability because before Dillian White did have a good jab, but he did not use it as effectively as he could do. Now he has started doing that a lot more. Dillian White back a couple of years ago just wanted to get stuck in and have a fight. Maybe that's why sometimes he is likened to having a similar style to Derek Chisora, but he doesn't. Dillian White can box, he can also fight on the inside when he has to. Dillian White has developed his boxing ability over the past few fights, and we definitely saw that in the Oscar Rivas fight. The best thing about Dillian White is his resilience, his adjustments during a fight. You don't see them often, but if you look at the Joseph Parker fight, Joseph Parker in that first round completely outboxed Dillian White. Joseph Parker looked like the one who was completely in control. So what did Dillian White do? If he could not box with Joseph Parker at that point, because Joseph Parker was a more experienced boxer, he turned it into a fight. And Joseph Parker was a better boxer than he was fighter. So Dillian White grabbed him, pulled him around, leant on him, and caught him with a headbutt. I don't believe that was intentional, but still made it rough. And Joseph Parker then started to shell up and did not box the same after that first round because Dillian White turned it into a dogfight and took it to a place where Joseph Parker was not used to going. Joseph Parker was used to boxing. The same thing happened with Joseph Parker when he fought Andy Ruiz Jr. In the first three rounds, it was a dogfight, but then Joseph Parker decided, okay, I'm going to use my speed, my footwork, my movement. And after that third round, Joseph Parker started to box Andy Ruiz Jr. That is when he started winning rounds. But those first three rounds between Andy Ruiz Jr. and Joseph Parker was very difficult for Joseph Parker because they were fighting on the inside. Whereas after that third round, Joseph Parker started making adjustments and started boxing. But in the fight with Dillian White, Dillian White never allowed Joseph Parker to go back to boxing. He made it a fight from the second round to the 12th round. And at points in that fight, maybe it seemed like Joseph Parker could get stopped, not because he was hurt, just because he wasn't really answering Dillian White back. He was trying to box and when he could not do that, he did not know what to revert to. Whereas Dillian White knows how to box if he has to, but that boxing game wasn't working in the first round. And instead of allowing rounds to slip by, round one, round two, round three, round four, going to Joseph Parker, then Dillian White stepping on it when it's too late, he adjusted in the second round. Let the first round go, okay, he's not gonna lose another round just because he doesn't know how to adjust. So he adjusted and started making it rough in there with Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker was in a fight with Dillian White when he wanted to box. So that resilience could quite possibly be Dillian White's biggest strength. It was Tyson Fury himself who said the best thing to do in a boxing ring is fight when your opponent wants to box. Box when they want to fight. And that is something that Dillian White ironically does himself. Tyson Fury was the one who said it, but Dillian White is the one who does it in the boxing ring. That is why maybe he does have the style to trouble Tyson Fury, because if it gets up close, he will not work to the head. Dillian White will work to the body. You cannot hit the head of Tyson Fury because he moves so well, but he cannot move his body as fast as he moves his head. That is why Dillian White, when he gets on the inside, will work to the body. But Tyson Fury is incredibly tall, moves incredibly well for a tall guy, very strong as well and heavy. So if he starts leaning on Dillian White, Dillian White will start to tire and Tyson Fury is very, very fast and picks different shots as well. He doesn't just throw a jab straight. He throws it from the hip. He spins it into a hook. So he varies all of his punches. You can never anticipate what Tyson Fury is going to do. 
But then again, can you ever really anticipate what Dillian White is going to do? So guys, anyway, what are your thoughts on this? Dillian White says he dropped Tyson Fury in sparring. Peter Fury, who was there, did not answer the question, did not say whether it happened or not. He just said that they were competitive spars. But Dillian White had his moments, but Tyson Fury ultimately always came out on top. Whether that's true or not, we don't know. The only thing that matters at the moment, though, is when they get into the ring, what happens then? Dillian White is much improved since 2013. So is Tyson Fury. So guys, anyway, what are your thoughts on this? Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments below. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Thanks, guys.